Hi there, welcome to my channel Bootlosophy, which is all about boots. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tech, and for those of you who do know me, welcome back. Today I'm taking a look at the Parkhurst Allen boot in dark roast Horween's Dublin leather after seven or eight months worth of wear. This is Parkhurst's plain toe service boot style called the Allen boot. The Allen is one of Parkhurst's flagship styles along with their Richmond Capto boot. It's been made in a variety of smooth and suede or matte leathers before, and I have uploaded uh, a few videos uh, before, which I'll, I'll put up here, and I'll put links in the description below. I have unboxed the Color 8 Dublin, and I reviewed the Spruce Kudu version that you can watch as well. But this version is in Horween Tannery's Dublin leather in a color called Dark Roast. Many of today's bootmakers who make heritage style boots do aim at that service boot aesthetic, um, so-called because they hark back to the military style boots from the Second World War. Generally plain toed, uh, Derby style lacing system, six inch height and a sleek profile so that the boot can double as a dressier boot, yet it's built sturdily enough to use as a work boot if you want to. You'll find the companies that started in the 2010s like Thursday, Oak Street Bootmakers, Grant Stone, Mark Albert, uh, Parkhurst, all have a flagship version of this style. They differ from the bulbous toed work boot styles, uh, whether plain toes or cap toes, like Red Wings, Iron Rangers and Blacksmiths, or um, the very overtly military styles like Doc Martens. I think you'll agree with me that the shape and profile of this style is very versatile. Now full disclosure, these were factory seconds. They were discounted because the leather had some loose grain on the vamp uh, uh, and here on this quarter. This boot is seven or eight months old, worn regularly but not frequently. Uh, and to be honest now, uh, I really don't see the extra wrinkles. I see them as part of the wear and really the patina that I look for in boots like these. The Allen boot is made by Parkhurst brand. Parkhurst is a small company started in 2018 by founder Andrew Savisco, who was driven to make uh, good quality American heritage style boots with updated aesthetics at an affordable price. Andrew was also motivated by the general decline of US manufacturing of quality boots, um, potentially losing generations of boot making experience and potentially devastating towns that once had great histories in boot making. As a small company, Andrew partners with an existing bootmaking factory in upstate New York, but he's really a one-man band. As a small company, Parkhurst is a small batch manufacturer. This means that he buys smaller batches of hides and makes a smaller batch of boots, and when that batch and type of leather runs out, he'll try another leather. This makes Parkhurst both frustrating and exciting. It's frustrating because you might see a model you like, but if you're too slow, you may find that it's run out because they're very popular. Uh, and there's a wait to get the leather again, or it may never be made in that leather again ever. It's exciting because of the innovative choice of leathers that Andrew will try, and it's exciting to hunt for that different special boot. Subscribe into that, and you'll find a great community on Facebook called the Parkhurst Enthusiast Group, which celebrates as people race to buy the boots when they drop or celebrate when members and uh, find old versions on the secondary market. I'll put a link to the Parkers Enthusiast group uh, in the description below. Parkers have a few different styles, but lately they have concentrated on the Plain Toe Allen and the Cap Toe Richmond Boot. Uh, they've used Horween's Chrome XL, Dublin and other leathers, as well as C.F. Stead suede and their exotic uh, uh, hides like Kudu and Moose, as well as Seidel's Double Shot and uh, Wax Flesh and other leathers. It's been described as a service boot adventure. Let's move on to look at how the boot is constructed. I'll start from the bottom up. This boot has a Daynight rubber sole and heel top lift. Daynight is a brand of the English Harbour Rubber Company, which invented the Daynight sole in 1910, so it's not new. The company was locally known to run their mills day and night, and so the new sole was branded as Daynight. Get it? <laughs> um, Daynight is a very popular sole used by a lot of bootmakers, 
because of the combination of sleekness and grip. As you can see, it's pretty flat uh, when you view it from the side. So you can, this, you can see that this could be used for smart shoes or for boots that are designed to be versatile as a casual or dress boot. At the same time, it has these studs which provide the grip. The low profile studs don't pick up dirt like uh, the deep commando lug soles. So uh, we could go back to allowing shoes and boots with day night soles to look dressy. You can visit your spouse's parents without them cursing that you've dragged in mud onto your, their carpet with your, with your boots. I've worn them in my urban style life. So concrete, rain or shine, grass, uh, carpeted floors, pub floors, um, slippery shopping center floors. Uh, I haven't slipped yet. The outsole is connected to the uppers using a 360 degree Goodyear welt construction. Let's just unpack that for a minute. For those of you who know what Goodyear welted construction is, forgive me, but there may be others who are new to quality boots and uh, don't yet know. Now, Goodyear welt construction is one way of attaching the uppers of the boot to the sole construction. In this case, it's 360 degrees because the Goodyear welt stitch goes all the way around, 360 degrees around. Um, in some cases, check out Alden Indies or Red Wing Iron Rangers, they're 270 degrees. That is, the stitching goes three quarters of the way around from here to here. The Goodyear welt construction takes a welt, a thin strip of leather mostly, and sews it to the turned in bottoms of the upper's leather. The outside edge of the welt, which is exposed here, is then stitched through the midsole and outsole, thus connecting the soles to the uppers. One way of telling, although there are faux stitches out there, is to look for the stitching on the outside edge of the welt here and around the outsole here. In this case, there are further variations to the basic Goodyear welt. I'm not sure the camera can pick this up, but here on top of the outside edge of the welt, you can feel ridges along the length. This is called a wheeled welt, meaning a wheel is run over the leather welt, creating this ridged effect. Also, as you can see here, the welt seems to be turned up against the outside of the boot. This is called a split reverse Goodyear welt. The inside half of the welt is split. The bottom part of that split is sewn to the uppers as usual, while the upper part is flanged out and pushed against the uppers, as you can see. This reinforces one of the advantages of Goodyear welted construction boots. It's touted as being very water resistant because there is a welt between the sole outside and the innards of the boot as a barrier. And as you can see, having a flange here should make it even more water resistant. The other stated advantage of the Goodyear welt is that it makes the boot resolable. If you had a fashion shoe with a cemented construction, the sole is glued to the uppers and when your sole runs thin or runs out or wears out, you can't really peel it off uh, uh, and glue another sole on without damaging the uppers. In this case, you can cut through the stitching here and peel off the rubber outsole and glue and stitch another one on without doing any damage to the midsole or to the uppers. On this boot, the midsole is leather, that's here between the rubber layer and the welt, and you can see the heel block is real leather. On some bootmaker's constructions, the midsole may be rubber or another man-made material, and the heel block could be something like wood with a leather veneer. Moving into the invisible inside of the boot, if you think about it, if you have a piece of leather going all the way around the edge of the sole, you create a little cavity inside, right? This is filled with cork and embedded into the cork just here inside the boot is a fiberglass shank. A shank is a strip of hard material, usually steel, that bridges this gap between the heel and the ball of the foot. It gives you a rigidity in that area, so it gives you arch support and torsion stability. In this case, it's fiberglass, which Andrew has chosen because he believes it has uh, advantages over steel, uh, being sturdy, long-lasting, helps easier break in, and doesn't rust, flake, or crack. I don't know, but it certainly doesn't set off airport security. I travel a lot for my work, before COVID, at least twice a month, and my Parkhursts are my preferred travel boots. Inside the boot is a leather insole, and on top of the heel area, uh, another leather heel base. All of these leather pieces in the sole construction are veg tanned American leather. Now this is real leather 
cork and rubber combination. And this combination makes for a sturdy and firm yet comfortable boot because it breathes, it wicks moisture, and it compresses to the shape of your feet, making them more and more comfortable the more you wear them. The inside of the boot at the vamp is lined with more veg tanned leather and it's reputed to be heavier, that means thicker leather than most other boots. In fact, in many heritage boots at this price, or even up to $200 more, uh, they don't use a leather lining, instead they use canvas or some other synthetic cloth material. The inside of the shaft is not lined. It has that nappy feel of the flesh side of leather. Some people like that because it's more supple without a, a full leather lining, and they say it breathes better. My preference is to have a full leather lining, like in Grant Stone boots. I, I don't really feel that it's any hotter and an unlined shaft tends to grab at my socks as I push my feet in. The first few minutes of walking around, my socks are pushing my toes up like a foot version of a wedgie. <laughs> the shape of the toe and the stability of the heel are kept by using a celastic heel counter and a celastic structured toe. Celastic is a synthetic thermoplastic sheet that you can shape when heated and they use it to form a thin extra layer at the toe and at the heel um, uh, to give it shape. The heel counter is covered by a one-piece backstay that cups the heel counter and extends up the back to the shaft. You find the Parker's Allen boot has variations. Sometimes in some models it has this one-piece makeup. In others two pieces, the piece that, um, that cups the heel uh, and a strip that goes up the shaft. It's a six-inch shaft and the collar is reinforced with another strip of leather on the inside. Stitching itself is single, double and triple stitching depending on need. Um, for example, the reinforcing strips at the collar and the one that protects the hardware on, on the inside is single stitched. The back stay is double stitched and the quarters, which do need some strength, is triple stitched here. The hardware is eight brass uh, eyelets, no speed hooks. Again, Allens may come with all eyelets or changed up with five eyelets and three speed hooks. The tongue is semi-gusseted up to the fourth eyelet. I guess it'll help with water resistivity. Certainly holds the tongue in place and helps to avoid tongue slip where the tongue slips to one side as you wear the boot over the course of the day. Uh, the upper is, as I mentioned, from Horween Tannery in Chicago. They make the famous Chrome XL combination tanned leather. This is their Dublin leather. Dublin is a veg tan, vegetable tanned leather. Uh, no chromium salts, uses tannins from, from vegetable materials. Uh, and it's tanned with a lot of natural waxes. As a veg tanned leather, it's tough and stuffed with waxes. The color is deep, yet shows the leather's natural grain. It's a pull-up leather, but not as much as Chrome XL. Here you can see the shade of color, I hope, vary as I pull on the leather from underneath. In this dark roast version, you can see the underlying grain, which I love. Now remember, these are factory seconds and supposedly have too much creasing here uh, and here at the quarter, just here. But really, if you think this is a regularly worn boot, which it is, and it's a veg tanned leather, would you really notice? And I tell you, it smells incredible, even, what, seven or eight months later. It feels supple, it's waxy, and it has a terrific feel under the hand, just like real full grain leather should. And it has a, it, it's patinaed in beautiful ways, in my opinion. So that takes us to leather care. With most Halloween smooth leathers, all you need is to brush them regularly. If they get dirty, wipe them with a damp cloth and then let them air dry and then brush them a lot. Brushing with a horsehair brush with the fine horsehair filaments will warm the leather and move the waxes and the leather around. Some people say to condition them as soon as you get them, which I used to do, uh, because they say the leather could have sat around for a while and the finished boot may have been in a box for a while. But I've become wary of over conditioning boots. Also, they have to have been stored in some very dry aired desert warehouse for a long time for these rich oils and waxes and the tannage to dry out. When you do have to condition them, when the leather starts to feel dry and less waxy to the touch, I don't think you can go wrong with Venetian shoe cream. Just apply a couple of thin coats, allowing to dry in between, and then guess what? Brush, brush, brush. <laughs> I don't advise shining with a, uh, with a cream or a wax polish. This is not a shiny dress shoe leather. It will mark and scuff. It will shift in color variations. It will patina with uh, use and age. Love those changes. 
I'll leave a couple of links to the care products below in the description area. Okay, now to sizing. Parkhurst are a direct-to-consumer company, which means you can only buy off their website. To many, this is off-putting because you can't try them on for size. Okay, so let's try to help you out. Since this is an American boot, I'll talk about my US sizing. Bear in mind, UK or Australian sizes are one number down from US numbers. That is, a US size 8 is an Australian size 7. Uh, the first thing is to know your true size or Brannock size. The Brannock device is the alumin uh, aluminium machine that you stand on at a shoe store. My true Brannock size is a US 8.5 and I'm a medium or a D width. Like many US bootmakers, Parker says to go half down. So these are US 8D and are a perfect fit for me. Uh, Andrew designed his own last. That's the uh, foot-shaped mold that the factory builds your, your boot around, pulls the leather around the last to make the boot this shape. This is the Parkhurst 602 last. The 602 last is built snug around the heel and the waist and opens up at the ball of the foot and then curves around the toes in a round shape rather than in a sharp almond shape. I feel no pinching or squeeziness anywhere. If you're at all concerned about the sizing, contact Andrew, uh, especially as Parkhurst doesn't offer wide fits, no E or double E fits. If you have a wider than average foot, ask Andrew as you may have to size up. Because the last is great for me and because this leather is so supple and also because the leather cork leather construction is not particularly hard to bend, I had zero break-in. As for the comfort factor, it's totally comfortable to wear for the whole day. For my feet though, the arch support is okay, but I would prefer a little more under the arch itself. You can request the arches to be built up inside in your order, so uh, if you think you need it, talk to Andrew. In my case, I bought myself some stick-on arch support wedges from the pharmacist, and that works fine. These are casual boots. While they're versatile and do look quite sleek, both in profile and from the top, I think they go dressy as far only as smart or business casual. The dark roast leather is aniline dyed, so the color shows a lot of the natural grain through. Um, so they don't go with a suit and probably not even with smart wool pants. I have worn them business casual with chinos and a button up shirt and a blazer. I've also worn them as smart casual in dark or black jeans with smart button up shirts and a bomber jacket or a Harrington jacket or a rough textured sports coat or even just with a jumper. They also definitely go with denim jeans of any style but I think slim fit is better than wide or relaxed fit. I'd also probably stay away from light wash denim, really faded denim, because they are a dark brown but I fully expect that once they get way more patina and scuffing, t-shirts would be great. Let's take a look at the value. I bought these, factory seconds, for 268 US dollars. They were on the website for 338 dollars. So at the mid 300s, what would you compare them with? Red Wing. They have quite a different aesthetic, but quality-wise, they compare well in my opinion. Uh, some versions of the Wolverine 1000 mile boots. Again, construction quality is similar. Uh, Grant Stone. Again, compares well. Grant Stone are probably better value for money, but that's against a lot of better brands even. So Grant Stone's probably a bit of an outlier. Personally, I think Parkhurst, especially with their more adventurous and hard to find leathers, you'd have to go to look at a Viberg or a Truman to get some of the Kudu, Rambler, Moose, Wax Suede's, uh, the Viberg service boots and this type of leather. Personally, I think Parkhurst offer really good bang for buck at the mid $300 range. With over 50 pairs of boots in my collection, my favourites, it's a bit like picking your favourite child, are becoming Parkers and Grant Stone for different reasons. Parkers QC is great. Andrew personally checks every boot out of the factory and if there are any problems, he deals with them for you very, very quickly. To me, the combination of innovation, Andrew's passionate drive, the leathers they're made in, the quality and fit and design, they all add up to good value. I would keep buying them at this price. There you go guys, I hope you like my review of these Parkhurst Allen boots in Dark Roast Dublin. Remember, they are factory seconds. If you liked my review, do me a favour, click on the like button below to tell YouTube that people watch this stuff and help me grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button. I have a load more boot reviews to bring to you, so if you subscribe, YouTube will send you notifications when I upload, 
so that you don't miss a thing. Go on. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you soon.